It's October, the spookiest month of the year, so I thought I'd talk about the scariest thing I can think of. Doctor Who as a movie. Ugh, I know, it's terrifying isn't it? Actually, I just couldn't think of anything else to do for this video. In 1996, the Doctor Who TV movie released to little fanfare and success. I've already made a video about the troubled production of this movie, but I thought I'd make a different video asking this simple question. Would a Doctor Who movie even work? There have been three Doctor Who movies since the show began in 1963. The first two were the Peter Cushing Dalek movies, serving as an alternate take on the first two Dalek serials of the William Hartnell era. The third was the infamous Fox-backed TV movie, which was a failed attempt at reviving the show after its 1989 cancellation. None of these films ended up being particularly successful and they are all regarded as acquired tastes, but you still see the idea of Doctor Who movies floating around. So why is this? Movies are seen as special. For decades you could only see movies at cinemas, paying for an overpriced ticket, overpriced snacks, and being crammed into a seat with a bunch of sweaty people. The exclusiveness of movies gave them a bit of a pedigree, any old schmuck could sit and watch the TV at home, but going to the cinema? Well, now that was a treat. Movies had the big name actors and directors. It was a spectacle, and it still very much is. Even with Doctor Who's lasting success and popularity, it is possible that people believe that a big screen movie would legitimise it. The prestige of movies is still apparent because they're still seen as events. Everything feels bigger and more special when it's on a cinema screen. Just look at the success of superhero movies in the last decade. Oh my god, I could smell the money now. Doctor Who has actually brushed with cinemas in recent years. Premiere episodes like Deep Breath and The Woman Who Fell to Earth have been shown in cinemas. But they're still just episodes you can watch on TV at the same time. They lack the feeling of exclusivity movies have. But here's where Day of the Doctor comes in. Day of the Doctor is a weird one. It's probably the closest we'll ever get to another Doctor Who movie. Day of the Doctor is an hour long special made for the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. It was promoted like a movie, filmed like a movie, and it released like a movie. It's basically a movie. It has a good ensemble cast with the critically acclaimed actor John Hurt and returning Doctor Who actors David Tennant and Billy Piper. It was made to be a special celebration of the show's history, and it was a huge success when it came out. But if Day of the Doctor was an actual Doctor Who movie in the same vein as the 1996 TV movie, it wouldn't really have worked so well. You see, Day of the Doctor barely has to build things up. You already know who the Doctor is, you already know about the Time War, the Daleks and the Zygons. It already has a base, giving it the freedom to do whatever it wanted, but an actual Doctor Who movie would have a few more obstacles to deal with. Movies need to make money. Ticket sales are vital to a movie's success. This means you have to try and get as much money as possible, meaning you need to attract as many people as possible. This means you have to make sure your audience understands what the hell they're watching. Otherwise, it would be like rocking up to the second Lord of the Rings movie and wondering what a Frodo is. Potatoes! It's why we've seen Uncle Ben and Bruce Wayne's parents die a thousand times. In Doctor Who's case, the audience would need to know who the Doctor is, what a TARDIS is, that whole shebang. It's the biggest challenge for not only Doctor Who, but any big screen version of a TV show. You need to make sure they're familiar with what's on screen, but in a way that doesn't take up half the movie. Explain too much and the existing fans get fed up. Explain too little and the newcomers end up lost. 
It's part of the reason why the TV movie was initially supposed to be a complete reboot of the show, and the fact that it was a continuation meant it wasn't successful in America because they had no idea what was going on. Another obstacle a potential Doctor Who movie would face is the story. There have been hundreds of Doctor Who episodes, so what makes a movie so special? The story would need to be good enough to warrant the extended budget and runtime, but once again, it would need to be accessible to more than just fans. You would need an especially unique and engaging story, one that makes it feel like it deserves the big screen treatment. There are some episodes that could have worked as a feature length movie if they had been extended. Dalek is a great episode as it is, but it could have easily been made into a longer episode, expanding upon the lone Dalek's growing humanity. However, I personally feel like there was already an episode ripe for being a movie. On the 23rd of April 2011, Series 6 of Doctor Who premiered with the episode The Impossible Astronaut, followed by Day of the Moon a week later. These two episodes would make a perfect movie if they were condensed and combined together. There's an interesting hook, the Doctor dies and then his past self shows up, there's a good marketable setting, 1969 America, and there's a very unique villain in The Silence. The two-parter itself is also very well shot, it almost already looks like a movie, but once again, it just doesn't establish all we need to know. The TV movie crashed and burned because it tried to introduce everything at once. It starts off with narration giving us exposition that an outsider wouldn't understand. What's a Dalek? Who's the master? What's Gallifrey? It also has to explain regenerations and Time Lords. It's too much. It's unnecessary. If I had to make a Doctor Who movie, well, first I'd arrange for my identity to be changed after it comes out. But then I'd sit down and think, what does the viewer actually need to know? And the answer to that is barely anything. Let's flash back to Rose the first episode of the 2005 revival of Doctor Who. It's a good comparison because it was given the daunting task of introducing Doctor Who to hundreds of thousands of people who had never seen it before. Writer Russell T Davies ended up creating one of the best introductions to the show, and here's why. First of all, we find ourselves learning about the companion, Rose Tyler. She's supposed to be the audience's surrogate, so we see things through her eyes and learn about things as she does. Once we're familiar with Rose, she gets put in danger by the monsters of the episode, the Autons. The Autons aren't some over-the-top alien monster, they're a unique villain based on shop mannequins, objects we've seen a million times, so we can understand them as a monster. Now that our supposed main character is in danger, she is suddenly rescued by a random, eccentric man who seems to enjoy being in danger. He saves her life and he's gone, just like that. All we know is that he's called the Doctor. I'm the Doctor by the way, what's your name? Rose. Nice to meet you Rose. Run for your life! The rest of the episode is from Rose's perspective as she investigates this strange man unravelling the mystery as it seems like he may be a time traveller. There is no mention of Time Lords or regenerating, it's not needed in the episode. Eventually we learn the Doctor does indeed travel in a time machine, and that's all we really need to know. The fatal mistake of the 1996 movie was having it be shown from the Doctor's perspective. I know it was necessary to pass the torch from Sylvester McCoy to Paul McGann, but by doing so they shot themselves in the foot. We didn't get the slow burn new viewers got watching Rose. Instead, everything had to be explained all at once. Who are you? I was dead too long this time. The anaesthetic almost destroyed the regenerative process. So if I was to make a Doctor Who movie, I'd model it after Rose. Regardless of whether the actor playing the Doctor is brand new or the one currently occupying the role, the companion would have to be new. It's the only way it'd work. 
With the Companion as the audience's surrogate, we can learn about the Doctor as the Companion does. The Doctor is just some crazy person who falls out of the sky, but they're mysterious, smart and exciting. That's all we need to be told at such an early stage. The Doctor is basically just a wizard, that's pretty much all we need to know. It would also be a bad idea to have the villain be the same level as the Daleks or the Master, because you can't build them up enough in that time. Something that's visually familiar and realistic looking, like the Autons or the Weeping Angels, would be perfect because they're simple but effective monsters. Your first act would be introducing the companion and the monster, then your second would be the companion trying to investigate or learn about the Doctor, and your third would be the Doctor saving the day. Simple as that, lovely stuff. Back of the net. But at the end of the day, do we really need a Doctor Who movie? Doctor Who's appeal comes from its status as a TV show. It's a big part of its charm. We get wildly different episodes week to week with completely unique stories and ideas. It's what has made it stand out among the hundreds of sci-fi TV shows through the years. The anthology nature of Doctor Who keeps you on your toes because few quality TV shows capture that line between anthology and continuous narrative storytelling. A Doctor Who movie would give us one potentially awful story whereas a series would give us a dozen. As long as we have Doctor Who on the TV, a movie is completely unnecessary. There's just no point. But if we were to have an especially long hiatus, or full-on Wilderness Years 2 electric boogaloo, a movie would be a great way to keep Doctor Who in the public consciousness. But what do you think? Would a Doctor Who movie work? Or are we better suited to just leaving it as pretty much the greatest TV show in history? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.